first president, with due respect, uh, needs to go back to elementary economics. The whole idea of economics is to choose alternatives, to choose from alternatives, to make a choice. They made the wrong choice at the wrong time. And that is where they are suffering consequences. And you need to understand that why I have zero sympathy for them is that one, they were the party in power before, and they said that they will continue where President Buhari stopped. Secondly, they said that they understood the problems at hand. Uh, the president said, don't, don't sympathize with me, don't pity me, uh, I, I know what I'm getting involved in. Thirdly, the problems that they said they are solving were caused by them. The inflation was caused by them. The rise in factor cost was caused by them. And the mischief, which they said they were going to solve, which was the subsidy, they've not even touched it on the surface. So these are their own crises. It's just, so it's just like someone coming to the China shop with a bull. And later says he's doing remedial um, operation there. You will cause the damage. So nobody should tell me that there's no alternative. I can give you five good alternatives immediately. Talk quickly. No, what, what makes it different? Alternatives. It is easier to talk if you don't think. But if you think, you will think thoroughly before you talk. And when you talk, it's where you will walk. So they have, they have not been thinking. And I'm not saying this just to um, be, be funny with them. A uh, milokon, it is my turn. It's not an economic philosophy. So, and the essence of Kwame is to tell us what you want to do. Dodging debates is not an economic policy. Bala, Blue, Bulaba, all of those uh, babbling, it's not an economic debate. So, they did not articulate what they wanted to do. They did not understand the implications of the decision they were taking. And they do not have the executive capacity. This is the problem. So, they are not going anywhere. They, they, you can give them 40 years, they are not going anywhere. This is why. If you look at the first republic, the most dominant education that people had is the PPE, philosophy, political science, and economics. If you don't have that knowledge, you cannot work for the common good. What you need to understand is that the productivity of a country is tapped from the people who are in that country and for the resources that the country is endowed with. That was why uh, David Ricardo came with all the, what he called cooperative advantage. What does it, it mean? That you plan your economy according to your geography and your history and the vision you have for yourself. So you don't copy Holus Bolus uh, from another place. For example, look at the CBN. He is doing Paul Volcker. How can you do Paul Volcker? Because he is thinking, if I raise interest rates, if I keep raising interest rates, I can fight inflation. So that's what he's trying to do, what Paul Volcker did in the 80s for Jimmy Carter. What uh, Cardozo is doing in the CBN makes no sense. Because what is driving uh, inflation is factor cost. It is not the availability of credit. The problem they have is that they went and devalued the currency and had illusion of money. In which case, you will say, oh, well, we used to, at fact, we used to share 2 trillion. Now we share 10 trillion. Well, 10 trillion is not up to the dollar of the past. And if you look at the contraction of the economy, our foreign exchange earning is still stuck at the real value of the 90s. So, which is why I say, why don't you employ the people? Right now, they are not employing people. Right. So they kill all the institutions that can employ people, and they are also not making a, a, an incentive for doing business in Nigeria. If you look at global incentive, look at the U.S. What is the incentive? The incentive is availability of credit. Anybody who wants to do business anywhere in the world, you cannot get a better credit facility for, than the U.S. In China, you have infrastructure support. So with uh, $1 million, you can have a factory of $1 billion because the state will support you, everybody will support you. Uh, now, in Europe, why do they support you? They support you with social services. So if you hire workers, you don't have to worry about transportation, you don't have to worry about insurance, health, and all of that because the state is taking care of that. Here, the only thing we had before was because we, we produced crude oil, so we had low energy costs. So if anybody wanted to uh, invest or produce in Nigeria, anywhere in the world, they will say, oh, Nigeria, go there, they have low energy costs. So go there. Secondly, because they have low energy costs, you can pay little wages to workers, so you have cheap labor. That's all gone now. And they are showing crass economic illiteracy. And that is a problem. And if you look at the way they are even analyzing data, you just don't come out and say, the economy, there's no alternative. You, you put your data together, then you do econometric analysis of your data. And you get a data-driven 
decision making. It's not dogmatic. If you, if when you are taking a step, every quarter you look at it. Look at look at the medium term expenditure framework. They are not keeping to it. There's nothing they are keeping to. Are you in that camp of people that say that we are being held hostage, that the people that are running the country are not even in charge? They are not running the country, they are doing business. Occasionally, they get distracted with governmental duties, but they are primary business, they are just business people. And they think, that's why they are trying to run petroleum industry rather than, you know, have a regulatory framework. They are not running the economy, they are not running government, they are just trying to, they don't see you and me as citizens. They see us as customers. So they are mercantile in their approach. So they see you, oh, you're a customer. I can get extra money from you by hoarding petrol. I can get extra money from you by underfunding public education. So they're not willing to do anything. And they're not willing to comply with chapter two of the constitution, which stipulates how governance should be done in Nigeria. What's the responsibility of government? Call anybody in government. They are not responsible for anything. Right. Because the Minister of Water Resources is not responsible for whether you have water or not. The Minister of Education is not responsible for educational outcome, whether the students fail work, fail jam, is not responsible. The Minister of Health is not responsible for the life expectancy or medical outcomes. They are just carrying these titles to enable them to put their signature to award contracts. But they're not, beyond that, they're not going to do anything. Remember that in the past, Lagos had the best water in all the English-speaking world. Lagos, yeah. better London, Brisbane, Ottawa, anywhere. Nobody is giving water to anybody. Before, we had the best hospitals. UCH Ibadan used to come first or second. Okay. The entire English-speaking world. They are not doing any of those things. So they are, we have people who are in power, but they are not in government because okay. they are not governing. 